Joining me now is Outstanding Scientific Achievement Award recipient, Dr. Jandy Lin. So I want to talk about your work with inner organ crosstalk, and for those who don't know what it means, but more specifically, the key signaling pathways involved in obesity and diabetes. So inter organ crosstalk referred to hormonal signaling from one organ or tissue to another. And it's kind of a way our body senses nutrient and energy status, communicate and respond to physiological needs to maintain homeostasis. So, you know, in the context of diabetes, um, obviously insulin is the most prominent hormone that regulates blood glucose and many metabolic processes. So how has the knowledge and understanding of endocrine signaling really evolved? And is this just the tip of the iceberg? Historically, um, early studies of endocrine signaling mainly focus on hormones produced by endocrine gland. But over the last several decades, it's become clear that uh, many cell types in the body, like adipocytes or fat cells and hepatocytes, could also release signaling molecules with important regulatory functions. So this latter group, the hormones produced by these non-professional cells, um, really remain under studies. And, and, and that's what our focus um, is in our lab. Well, clearly that's where you come in. I know your lab specifically has made some key signaling molecule discoveries. Talk about those and really the impact on the field and on patients. Um, in the last several years, um, our focus has been on two such secretive factors. One is called neuroglin 4, which is a, a fat-derived hormone that could regulate liver metabolism and hepatocyte cell health. Um, the second protein that we study is called Sucushi or TSK. And this protein turned out to be um, secreted by the liver and could regulate adipose thermogenesis and whole body energy balance. Um, so I think these findings you know, support the idea that uh, metabolic tissues also carry out very important endocrine functions in addition to their role in nutrient and energy metabolism. And that has to be pretty exciting for you, not just as a researcher, but the idea of changing patients' lives just by really the knowledge of these metabolic tissue microenvironments. You know, the idea that different types of cells form this microenvironment that could influence tissue metabolism and metabolic disease. Um, this idea is not new, but there were uh, really significant challenges in studying this problem. We now have very powerful tools that enable us to dissect the molecular nature, dynamic regulation of microenvironment in the tissues like fat and the liver in both healthy and disease state. So our hope is that by better understanding cell heterogeneity, you know, the communications and reprogramming within this microenvironment in disease, we might be able to target certain cell types or signaling pathways to influence the cause of disease, you know, like diabetes and fatty liver disease. I would be remiss if I didn't say congratulations on your award. And I know it's always nice to be recognized for your work, but how do you think that getting this award and having more people know about your work will help in your research and ultimately better help patients? Well, I was really thrilled to receive this award, um, not only because it's a, it's a wonderful honor, but also for the fact that um, ADA supported our research at the very beginning of my independent career. So this feels um, very special. And we hope to um, expand this area of research, not only studying the basic biology of metabolism and metabolic disease, but also keeping really a keen eye on exploring how we could transform this new knowledge into potential therapies and, and patient care. And that's pretty exciting. Dr. Lin, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oh.